power injections are required when going over 200 lights with a 4.17 amp power supply or 250 lights with a 5 amp power supply. One should not exceed 270 total feet when combining spacer cable and lights regardless of power supply amperage. Scenario 1. This is the most basic way of injecting power with a power T. Let's start off by looking at the power T. The power T is shaped like a T. It has two females and one male connection. The bottom connection is a female. The female connection on the bottom is where you inject power directly from a power supply. Never use this terminal for anything else. Signal will flow from left to right and right to left. However, power will not flow either direction. Power will only flow in one direction, up from the bottom female, out through the upper female. In this scenario, we will be using a control box for simplicity. The blue line designates the signal going into the power T from the control box. The signal will go into the power T and come out the other end as if nothing happened at all. After passing through the power T, the signal will just go to additional lights and spacer cable. The power coming out of the control box runs through 200 lights and spacer cable and is all absorbed before reaching the power T. The power T severs the line and blocks the power from going any further. To power up any additional lights, we need to inject power with a power supply. Power comes out of the power supply source and goes up through the power T. It then continues on through the power T and out the female terminal. This is the most common and basic way of injecting power. Alright, scenario 2, we're going to add a bit of complexity. In this scenario, we once again start off with a power T and control box. Sometimes when you get to 200 lights, you don't land anywhere near a power supply. Since there is no outlet near the power supply, we are going to cap the bottom leg off and not use it at all. The additional lights will need to have power injected at some point, but we have approximately 250 feet where we can look for another power supply to inject power later. Let's start by mapping out the signal and power so we can understand this scenario a little better. The blue line represents the signal, and once again it goes into the power T and directly out just like our last scenario. Power comes out of the control box and hits the power T. Once again it hits a dead end because power cannot transfer left to right or right to left. We need to find an outlet somewhere in the additional lights, under 250 feet. This is where we're going to plug our injection power supply. Are we going to get power into the second line? Ah yes, a basic T. Let's draw the red power line so we can better understand how power will flow. Power flows up through the bottom of the basic T, and then it flows both through the left and right arms of the basic T. Power flows forward and backwards to power up the 250 lights with a 5 amp power supply. Scenario 3, we're going to get a little bit more complicated again. In some instances, you will have a bi-level house with over 250 combined feet between the upper and lower levels. If you exceed 200 to 250 feet, you're going to need a power injection. Since most house outlets have two sockets, it's easiest to do this injection right in the beginning. Add a basic T right after the control box to split the upper and lower levels. Connect a power T directly to the basic T for the lower level. Now let's draw the blue line so we can see how signal will flow across both the lower and upper levels. And next, let's draw the red power line so we can have a better understanding where power is stopping and where it is flowing. Looks like the control box powers up the entire upper level of the house. Now we need to find a way to get power into the bottom level of the house. Just like scenario 1, we will inject power directly through the bottom of the power T if possible. Power will flow up through the bottom leg of the power T and out the female leg of the power T. Combined, this will give a signal and power for up to 400 to 500 lights for both upper and lower levels. Scenario 4. This is the most advanced of all the scenarios we've discussed here. We are going to split up the controller and power supply, so no need for a control box. Since we're talking about power injections, we'll assume that we're going over 200 feet of lights, which means we need a power T, and then we'll have additional lights after the power T. Let's first draw the blue line to show the signal and how it flows through the system. That was the simple part. Now we need to add power to the first section of 200 lights. We'll inject power through a basic T from the power supply itself. Power will flow down through the basic T and go both directions out to the power T and into the control. As expected, power stops at the power T from the first power supply. We need a second power supply in order to add power to the additional lights. Power will flow from the bottom female terminal of the power T and out the female terminal to the additional lights. You can keep repeating this injection process as many times as you need up to 1024 lights.